Hello and welcome to your background video for the Chemical Equilibrium in Le Chatelet's Principal Lab. This week, we will be looking at several colorful equilibrium reactions. We will use our observations of these colored solutions to help us understand Le Chatelet's Principle as the system works to re-establish equilibrium after we alter the reaction conditions. To represent how the products and reactants are related at equilibrium, we write an equilibrium constant expression, which is denoted with a capital K. Equilibrium expressions are written as products over reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. Look at this generic reaction. The equilibrium constant expression would be this. You should be comfortable writing these expressions for any equilibrium reaction you encounter. You can find lots of examples in a chemistry textbook. As a general rule, if the equilibrium constant is greater than 1, that means that the reaction is product favored. If the equilibrium constant is less than 1, the reaction is reactant favored. Le Chatelet's principle states that if we take a system at equilibrium and we change any reaction condition, including temperature, concentration, volume, or pressure, the system will adjust to counter that change until the equilibrium is reached again. During today's lab, we will be looking at the effects on the production of products and reactants when we change the concentration and the temperature. Sometimes it is helpful to think of Le Chatelier's principle in terms of a seesaw. And at equilibrium, the products and the reactants have found a balance, so the seesaw runs parallel to the ground. If we add products to the right side, then the seesaw becomes unbalanced. To reach this balance again, we will have to convert some product to reactant, and then our seesaw can straighten back out. When it comes to temperature, we need to remember that the equilibrium constant is temperature dependent, meaning that it will have a different value at different temperatures. The effect that a temperature change will have on a system is determined by the characteristics of the reaction, namely if the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. If you plug some test numbers into this equation here, you can see that if the reaction is exothermic, meaning it has a negative delta H, that lowering the temperature will result in a shift towards the product side. If a reaction is endothermic, or it has a positive delta H, lowering the temperature will result in a shift towards the reactant side. The opposite of this is true when you raise the temperature. As part of this week's exercise, you will change the temperature of a reaction and draw reasonable conclusions as to whether the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. In exercise one, you will be making each of the complexes in a way that allows you to observe them individually before you begin changing the equilibrium. It is crucial to take very good notes of your observations during exercise one, because you will need to know what the individual compounds look like in order to know how the equilibrium shifts. For instance, let's say we're looking at this equilibrium reaction, where complex A has a bright green color and complex B has a bright blue. Our solution is currently blue. We stress the system by increasing the concentration of complex B and the solution turns green. What conclusions can you draw from this? What happens if we add a little more of A and the solution turns blue-green? That's right, that means that both species are now present in the solution. To help you organize your observations, an example data table is found in the lab manual. You should make one of these tables for each of the solutions you make and you will likely have to modify it in some way to reflect what you do with each of the test tubes experimentally. One thing to keep in mind as you are making your observations is the difference between clear and colorless. Clear means that you can see through the solution, and colorless means that the solution has no color. Many people switch these up and say that a solution is simply clear when they really should have said it's clear and colorless. You can very easily have a clear pink solution or a clear blue solution as well. In exercise two, when you are making your solution, you can determine which equilibrium reaction the experimental steps correspond to by looking at the reagent you're adding. For example, both of the copper complexes start with the same copper containing crystalline solid. You will add ammonia to one solution and potassium bromide to another. Which equilibrium reaction goes with which combination? That's for you to figure out. Well, that's all we have for this week. We hope this video was helpful and make sure you watch the technique video before you prepare for your quiz.